This isn't an ordinary chicken farm. Actually, it isn't even a farm. Hey, Ben. Hi, Stephen. Benjamin Ung started rearing his own chickens at a community space nine months ago because he wanted fresh eggs and to eat premium chickens bred in what he feels are more humane conditions. These are breast chickens. They are originally from France. This girl here is having her dust bath for the day. <laughs> okay, so this is the rooster. Yep. And you just cradle him around the face. Wow, he's quite a chunky guy. He's about three and a half kilos. A lot of good chicken coming to mind, being roasted and yeah, tasting really yummy, but I feel a bit bad saying it in front of you, buddy. Well, this chicken has been described as the queen of poultry and the poultry for kings. So they've been bred specifically for their flavour and texture of the meat. When you process them, you look at the, the legs, the bone structure is completely different from what you'll see in a commercial breed. And as you're holding him now, you'll be able to notice that the breast is not as puffed up. It's very lean. It's actually been really good quality meat. I'll take your word on that. <laughs> Has it been worth all this time and effort? I mean, here we are, we're sweating away, you know, and it's not even a sunny day. And there's so few chickens. One would think, I just go to the supermarket, pay five, six bucks. It's easier to just buy it off the rack. This chicken breed, you will not be able to buy fresh here. You can only get it frozen. And even then, it's about $50 to $70 per bird frozen. Wow, okay. So if you're looking at the quality of the meat or the experience of something different, then I would say it's definitely been worthwhile. The breast chickens you see here belong to the same family as the world's most expensive chicken. I can't believe I'm seeing these live in Singapore. These chickens are different because they require more personal space and a third of their diet consists of naturally foraged earthworms, insects and even grass. While not all of us can afford to eat the breast variety, chicken is our favourite protein. We eat more chicken than pork, beef or mutton. We love our chicken so much that in 2019, we consume nearly 34 kilograms of it per capita. That's equivalent to three whole chickens per person every month. This is the first time I'm hearing about breast chicken. But then again, gone are the days when chicken is just that, chicken. They now come with labels such as free range, cage free, organic, probiotics fed, attached to them. Each variety of chicken promising to be more environmentally friendly, healthier and tastier than your average chicken. But just how much do we know about the different varieties of chickens available to us? And which ones should I buy? I'm enlisting the help of Wendy Fu, co-founder of Ryan's Grocery. The specialty grocery chain is one of the largest in Singapore and has been in the business of selling chickens for over five years. Some of the chickens she sells cost over $20 a kilo. So she'll be helping me tell my chickens apart. Wendy, I need your help. What is the difference between all these types of chicken? First of all, you have the conventional ones, where they are kept in cage. The living condition is not as hygienic. They are fed with the antibiotics so that they stay healthy. Most chickens that we get in the supermarket are reared that way. Yes, that's right. And you only need 40 days, then they will send for kill. So basically, they're sitting in a box, just eating, growing fat, and then 40 days later, that's it, their time is up. That's right. These chickens, reared in cages, are typically referred to as factory farm or broiler chickens. They're the chickens we're most familiar with. We also have the free roaming chicken. What does that mean? They are also kept in confined area. Uh, but then they're not in a cage. So they get to roam around in that confined area with uh, some natural lights. So they have a home, but they can go out, walk around, and then come back in. Is it the same as a yeah. kampung chicken? Kampung chicken is actually it's, it's a breed. Oh, okay. I always thought because in no. the kampung, we let them out and they can walk around. There. No, no, no. <laughs> it's, a, it's actually a breed. Kampung chickens were originally a breed of free-range chickens from Indonesia. But they are now farmed in cages just like regular broiler chickens. 
What about these guys? Because I've heard of all the different kinds of feed as well. You know, yes, corn that's fed, right. Grass fed. What does it mean? Actually, every feed will change the texture of the meat. Bromelain fat chicken. They actually feed using hyper enzymes. Bromelain? Yes, yeah. it's bromelain. The meat is actually firmer and leaner. They are also lower in fat and cholesterol. Okay. And because of what they eat, they are also anti-inflammatory properties from the animals. This chicken has a bit of the yesteryear's chicken taste. If you ask your grannies, I tell you, they will tell you the difference. <laughs> <laughs> but these guys are still not organic, right? They're not considered organic. To me, they're not considered fully organic. Honestly speaking, these are from Malaysia. They will have a dose of antibiotics. Oh, how come? That's why we never claim no antibiotics. We say antibiotics residue free. They probably have the first dose when they are born. Residue free means it's been in their system and they're very clean and, and they clean it up. Yeah. What then is an organic okay. chicken? This is from Australia. Uh -huh. um, they are 100% organic. First of all, they do not use antibiotics. Even when the chicken are sick, they use essential oils. They use apple cider to treat oh. them. So they are very straight and they are certified by the Australia Organic Certification Board. Compared to the regular broiler chicken, the rest of these chickens come at a heftier price. A cage-free corn and soy-fed chicken, for example, will set you back $23 a kilo. Bromelain or pineapple enzyme fed, $19 a kilo. And the most costly, a 100% free-roaming organic chicken at a whopping $42 a kilo. That's about eight times the price of conventional chicken most of us are used to. Why is there such a huge price difference? Having eaten factory farm chicken pumped with antibiotics all my life, I cannot imagine paying so much more for one that eats premium feed or one that is free from antibiotics. I wonder if these premium chickens are worth the money. It feels like tofu when you bite and then it just goes all over. I've learned that not all chickens are created equal. And one of the biggest factors that divides them, the use of antibiotics. And organic chickens, that's chickens entirely free of antibiotics, are the most costly ones. I wonder why these chickens cost so much more. Perhaps it's because of this? These feathered friends are reared in Yongping, Malaysia, before making their way to the plant in Singapore. And while they are there, Mozart is piped in 12 hours a day. So I know you all have several different types of chicken, but there's also one called lactose chicken where they get to even listen to classical music by Mozart. Is that right? Lactose chicken is one of our flagship products in the company that doesn't farm with any antibiotics at all or even grow promoters and they listen to classical music. Why classical music? Mozart gives the chicken a less uh, stress environment. If they don't feel so much stress, they grow up healthier and their meat is a bit more tender. And besides the music, you're saying that the chickens also are not given any antibiotics? Yeah, not a single drop of antibiotics has been fed since uh, day old chick until the day they are being processed. The reason being, we are using lactobacillus in terms of the farming process. The lactobacillus promotes a healthier digestive intake for the chicken. So once the chicken has a healthier digestive intake, their immune system improves. Once it improves, there isn't any for antibody at all. Okay, so you think instead of antibiotic, by what they're eating, that will sort of keep them healthier? Build up their immune system. I see. So how does this benefit the consumer? Uh, for this healthier chicken, the saturated fats is lower and the cholesterol is lower as compared to the normal chicken. With that in mind, we are also looking at a chicken without a single dog antibiotics and growth promoters or hormones. Do you think this is the future of chicken where more chicken will be farmed this way and treated this way uh, versus what is being done now? Yes, I observe a growing trend be it in Singapore, Malaysia or anywhere in Southeast Asia. Uh, this trend is picking up. A, a lot of farmers, they are switching to how do we uh, farm in a larger scale. 
yeah. without using any anti antibiotics or growth promoters in the process. To give consumer more healthier choice options in terms of a good quality protein. The price of Kisong's organically farmed and antibiotics-free chickens? About three to four dollars more than conventional ones. They're not as expensive as 100% organic chicken because they don't go through a fully organic slaughtering and packing process after leaving the farm. By and large, organic free-range chickens cost more for a variety of reasons. For one, it takes a much longer time to raise these premium chickens. A minimum of 56 days for a free-range chicken and 81 days for an organic one, compared to just 40 days to raise a broiler or factory farm chicken. More time is needed because free-range and organic chickens are usually raised without the aid of antibiotics and growth promoters. Hence, they take a longer time to reach the ideal size for slaughtering. Then there's the amount of personal space given to each chicken. On average, organic chickens get the most space at 10 chickens per square meter. Free-range chickens at 12. And conventional broiler chickens packed in at 17 chickens per square meter. And just like humans, what they eat adds up as well. Some are fed with slightly more premium feeds like corn, soy, organic feed, brown rice, and in the case of Kisong's lacto chicken, probiotics. Professor William Chen is one of the nation's leading authorities in emerging food technology and safety. And I'm surprised to find out that he's not picky about the chicken he eats, opting for conventional factory farmed ones. I wonder why. So antibiotics are being used to prevent chicken from falling sick therefore to maintain the number of chickens turning out from the chicken farm. But consumers should be aware that the SFA, Singapore Food Agency, has a very strict inspection scheme, such that the chicken that pass on to the retail end, like wet market or supermarket, the level of antibiotics uh, way below this tolerated level called maximum residual level, mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, we know that the chicken we buy is safe for consumption. So that means that there could still be some antibiotics in the chicken, but it's below the level that is uh, uh, regulated. That's right. But I guess people are concerned because we always hear about this term called uh, antibiotic resistance. The old folks will say, don't have too much of it, otherwise your body will build up resistance. So there's a fear that if I keep eating chicken that has antibiotics in it, will that be harmful for my body? And then when I get sick, will the antibiotics work at all? First, we should not worry too much about antibiotic uh, in the chicken because okay. it's, uh, it falls below the MRL level. Second, um, the antibiotic resistant bacteria, these are mainly found in the digestive system of the chicken, not in the meat. Mm. The chances of having antibiotic resistant bacteria jumping into the meat are very low. And thirdly, when we cook properly the chicken, the, but all the bacteria, uh, whether they are antibody resistant or not, they will be killed off. So uh, consumers should not be overly worried about uh, eating chicken bought from supermarket or wet market. So the Singapore Food Agency, the body that regulates our food imports, ensures that the chicken sold here can have only limited amounts of antibiotics in them. I may not have to worry about antibiotics fed to my chickens. Which leaves just one more thing I want to investigate. Actually, every feed will change the texture of the meat. If what my chicken eats truly affects its taste. I always thought chickens ate only simple grains and mash. But it seems now they are also into a healthy diet. There is, can you believe it, chickens fed brown rice, priced at $14 a kilo. Corn fed chicken, priced at $23 a kilo. And then we have chickens fed with strictly organic feed, priced at $42 a kilo. Chickens given 100% organic feed cost a whopping eight times more compared to conventional chickens. 
So it seems like the better they eat, the more I have to pay. But I wonder if what the chicken actually feeds on is better for its health and therefore more nutritious for us. I'm meeting Dr. Lin Tai over a meal of some finger-licking good chickens. It smells good. It's interesting. Let's check it. Dr. Tan is a poultry health expert who has spent over 12 years assisting poultry farms in various parts of the world with production, health and welfare management. So would the feed affect the nutritional composition of the chicken? I think in terms of their benefits to the chicken, it should be about the same because the formulation they would generally calculate and proportion out the appropriate raw materials to provide energy levels that they require for their functional uh, maintenance. What you're saying is that regardless of what they eat, it's all been formulated such that they are fed a certain amount of energy, protein, etc, etc. Yeah, that's correct. So if that's the case, then why do farms bother to feed their chickens different grains and different, you know, feeds? I think for example, let's say brown rice and quinoa, right? They are very well known in uh, human consumer circles for their purported health benefits, high fiber, you know, gluten free. So this could trigger a positive psychological effect in the consumer already, that thinking that, oh, this is a health product. So if a chicken is being fed this, it must be a healthier chicken. But in actual fact, it really doesn't increase the fiber content of chicken meat or anything. Right. It doesn't do that. So I think it's just, a marketing aspect of chicken meat that people need to be aware of. These guys actually cost quite a bit more than your typical broiler chicken. Is it really worth the money? In my opinion, I wouldn't pay that much more for a brown rice fed or corn and soy fed chicken because I know that ultimately um, the nutritional formulation would be the same as a typical commercially fed chicken. So it seems that the nutritional value of a chicken's feed and it being passed down to a consumer is more of a long shot. Which leads me to investigate one last thing, whether the feed truly affects taste. I've decided to conduct a little experiment. I'll be poaching four different types of chicken, which ensures that their flavour remains unadulterated. On the menu, your regular boiler chicken the one most of us are familiar with. A 100% organic, free-range chicken fed only strictly organic feed. Corn and soy fed chicken. And brown rice fed chicken. Come on in, come on in, have a seat please. Our taste testers, these three very experienced chicken consumers. Amba loves chicken rendang. Razor can't imagine life without fried chicken. And Ria has chicken at least five times a week. All right, here we go. This is chicken A. Ladies first. Thank you. Okay, tuck in. Tastes very rubbery. Oh yeah? The first bite. Very chewy. The mm. first bite has a bit of salt taste. Uh, just a little bit of salt in the water. I don't taste the strands. It's like smooth. Oh, okay. What, what strands are you talking about? Some chicken, like especially the nasi lemak type, can feel the strands. But this oh, one, the, str yeah. so the yeah. strings of yeah. that. Okay, okay. What do you no think? No taste, no taste. Alright, this is B. Any difference in the taste? Kind of feels like tofu when you bite and then it just goes all over. Oh, wow. Yeah. So is that is that a good thing? You like prefer this kind of chicken? No, I think I prefer I, the first one. Yeah, same. Like the moment you bite, it feels like it disintegrates in your on your tongue. Yeah. It's a bit hard to bite. Huh? <laughs> yeah. The taste a bit similar to the bee. Yeah, this one really? first impression, yeah, very tough. I think it's like a bee but a tougher and drier version of bee. Hmm, okay. Yeah. No taste at all. No taste. Yeah, not so nice. Oh, okay. Just one more to go. Thank you. Mm. Uh, a good hmm or a... Much more tough, I have to. <laughs> really okay. chew. Okay. For me, I felt like this tastes very similar to C, but then the difference is, it's like a more, like a wetter version of C. Okay, so which is your favourite? Show me your answer. A. A. Same. A. 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 <laughs> 
And A, wow, everyone like chicken A. Okay, so you wanna know which is which? So A is the chicken that is fed with brown rice. B was the corn and soy fed chicken. Oh, okay. Now, uh, chicken C is a broiler chicken. It's just your the regular normal. chicken, the normal one. Uh. And D is the organic chicken. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> are, are, you, are you surprised yeah, by the I'm result? Surprised. Why? I'm surprised because it looks more organic and healthy than this one. And compared to the taste for the A and the D, I was thinking A was organic. So the organic chicken, which was the most expensive of the lot, didn't trump when it came to the taste test. All our tasters picked the brown rice fed chicken, priced about two and a half times cheaper than the fully certified organic chicken, but three times more than the conventional broiler ones. Ah. So now that I know more about the different varieties of chicken available, I can be more discerning about my choices. Are premium chickens really worth my money? Well, taste-wise, perhaps, but that's a matter of personal preference. When it comes to its nutrition, well, not so much. I've learned that cheaper conventional chickens are just as nutritious. But if I'm concerned about how the chickens are being reared and their welfare, then I suppose I will have to fork out the extra cash for my favourite chicken. <laughs>